educational firm that empowers traders with a complete detailed system become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin uh, and political science in 1984. She was employed for by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008, a self-taught day trader with over 10 years of experience. Uh, Melissa's specialty is a trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap up. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch M Melissa on RT America, Cheddar <laughs> TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. Uh, so, Melissa, you have until five minutes before the hour. Uh, then we'll give away our ne next batch of prizes. Uh, so I'm going to mute myself. And this is my one chance a quarter where I get to say weenie, weedy, weechy. <laughs> I think you say that every time I'm on, John. You really make I'm, me feel like I'm... Little you're the only Latin <laughs> speaker we found as a presenter. <laughs> well, thanks for the beautiful introduction, John. And Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to everyone. It's an interesting time of the year right now in December because you have very active days in the market, like today, where the market is selling off like a hot kink. And then you have some days where you just got to kind of take a step back and wait and see what's going to happen. I think that makes a big difference between someone that is a beginner trader or someone that is a seasoned trader to know when to go full throttle or I call it like hog wild, you know, and you do everything in the world or you just back off and you don't do anything and you just kind of wait and see. So again, as John was mentioning, uh, next week the Fed talks and they will announce if they are raising rates and if so, how much. Before I start talking today, I'm going to give you my take. My take is that the Fed is going to continue to raise rates as much as they've been. That may be antithetical to what many people are saying, particularly people I've been on television with. I was on Fox News last week, and the man I was on with was very bullish and thought the interest rates would be dipping from what they previously said. I am the contrarian here. I believe they will raise rates 75 basis points, at least in December. Um, and we're nowhere near the Fed's target of 2% inflation. And in fact, I think the Fed will overcorrect in raising rates and continuing to raise rates at a fast pace going into 2023. So what will this mean for the market? It means we could have some great trading days really between now and actually the holiday week. So you have to take advantage of this and you have to take advantage of every single opportunity that you get in the market, whether you like to go long or whether you like to go short. I have made a niche on shorting and it's funny when John said the introduction, I've actually been trading now for almost 15 years. So that introduction was written by my assistant quite a long time ago. Almost 15 years in 2023 will be that I've been trading and it feels like I've been doing it for pretty much my whole life. I wish I had found out about trading the market really when I graduated college. Um, I didn't, you know, but I'm happy that I found out about it when I did, you know, 15 years ago. So if you've been doing this for a while and you haven't found success, don't give up. That's the best advice I can give you today. Stay positive. Don't give up. Many people go through hits and misses. They'll go to one person, learn something. It doesn't work. Lose money. Then they'll find another person. It's a process to gain information as you go along to find the right system to trade. And that is why lectures like I'm doing today and the other people here are extremely helpful. It gives you an opportunity as an introduction to see is what I'm going to say going to resonate with you today. Again, everybody does something different. So it's the idea, is this, is this something that you might be interested in? Because today is just an introduction into my system, a little bit about what I do. I see Kumar here today. Kumar is on my options newsletter list. He, he just joined. Uh, so he's been doing the options trades. So if you're new to me, you never heard of me before. Again, my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company called The Stock Swish. I do live in Manhattan. And it, again, you know, this is one of these things where you could live anywhere in the world. You don't have to live in New York City to trade. I don't live anywhere near Wall Street, actually. I live uptown. But you can live in a different country and trade the U.S. stock market. And many people find the U.S. stock market very advantageous to trade because it is a fixed market. It has fixed hours, it is regulated, and it has a lot of volume, a lot of momentum, a lot of volatility, which makes for a great opportunity if you know how to trade it. 
So today we're gonna to talk about shorty, and again, this is a great time to talk about it. One, we fell yesterday, two, we're falling today. So we're gonna talk about shorting stocks using the system that I do, which is based on gaps, and we're gonna talk about it in a little bit here too. If you have questions and you'd like to call me after the webinar, email me. My email is melissafastockswish.com. My phone number is 929-3200-GAP, and you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. When I'm on TV, I, I always put what my hits are, and I always have previous hits on YouTube. And I actually encourage you to go watch the hit from Fox News last week, because you'll see how I called the market lower last week, we're falling now, and the other person that was on was very bullish. Um, so this is, this is you know, you, you kind of got to take a, a, a viewpoint, a vantage point, and say, what am I doing here? You know, if you're somebody that is long-term invested in the market for your retirement account or something, do I think the market recovers eventually? Yes. Do I think it recovers before the end of the year? Absolutely not. We're nowhere near the highs. As an inactive trader, which is what I am, all I'm concerned about is today. Right now, today, this second, this day, this week, or everything that I'm, that I'm calling. Kumar watched me on Fox. He said it was a brave call on Fox News. It was. It was because the other guy was so bullish. The other guy was so bullish, actually. You love the Gap newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, Kumar. Good return investment. Thank you. Anyways, you can watch me on TV. I don't know when I'm on next, but I'm here, and we're going to get into it right now. So can you earn a living in the stock market as a professional trader? The answer is yes. Yes. So why do so many people struggle? Well, they don't have a good strategy. That's number one. And so they're all over the place doing many, 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 many different things all the time. Here are our results year to date. Someone is saying they can't see. Can everybody see the PowerPoint? TK says he can't see. This is year to date 2022 results, 623,644. So this is year to date, day trades only with an average risk of $2,800 a trade. Again, this is up through the week before Thanksgiving. Now, I just moved, I just moved into a new apartment in Manhattan two weeks ago. So actually t Monday was my first day back in two weeks of being off for the Thanksgiving holiday. But prior to that, 623,644, we actually didn't do anything today. Yesterday we shorted Tesla. I don't have that trade in here. We can look at that chart and then we can talk about Tesla, which obviously is lower. I called a day trade in that yesterday and an option. So as far as you, you yourself, going into the end of 2022 and looking forward into 2023, what should you be focused on? You should be focused on yourself, your own goals, your personal goals, your financial goals, how to improve your life. Fast forward 12 months from now, December 6, 2023, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? It's about empowering yourself to get there. So whether or not, again, whether the market rallies, whether it falls, whether we go into a recession, okay, that was a discussion on Fox News last week, whether we have an increase in rates or the lower rates, whatever the course may be, you still want your life to move forward, continue proceeding, and get better. You cannot control what's going on in the rest of the world. You can't control what's going on in Ukraine. You can't control what's going on in Russia. None of those things can you control. The cost of diesel fuel, the cost of oil, all the things that have impacted us, ever, our everyday goods, everything we buy has gone up. You can't control that, but you can empower yourself to actually earn more money. Right now, today, 2022 and 2023, how are you gonna do it? So again, a lot of people attempt to trade, they fail, they lose money, they make money, they end up losing after all. How are they gonna do it? Many people find trading elusive because they just don't have a good strategy. They think they're doing something as a strategy. It's not. Buying dips is not a strategy. I'll tell you that right out of the gate. It simply doesn't work consistently in any market unless it's a power trend bullish market, which actually we were in in 2021. So to start the year off, people were buying dips. They're still doing it now. In fact, that guy I was on Fox News with, I, I mean, he's buying every dip, I can tell you right now after hearing what he said. But the fact is that is not going to work unless you're in an extremely strong market, which was 2021. Okay, 2021 is over. It's been over for almost a year. You've got to live in the moment. What's happening now? And if you're buying the dip every, every time this year, you're actually down for the year. Okay, you're down for the year. That's a problem. That's a problem. You need to change your viewpoint, change your strategy, change what you're doing so that you can be successful. Okay? So we're going to talk about gaps today and what is a gap? Let's just go over it here, right here. This is the market again. This is SPY today. I don't know where we're at this second. I clipped this this morning about 40 minutes ago. 
Market closed here yesterday, gap down, snug as a bug. It wasn't a big gap down, it was a little small gap down. Again, market closed at four o'clock at one number and opened at a different number the next day, which was today. So this is four o'clock, this is 9.30, and we fell, okay? And you could have shorted the market today. Already called puts here from yesterday, that's what Kumar was talking about. I called puts in the spy yesterday, early, super duper early, and they're continuing today, okay? Anyways, long story short, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. There are bullish gaps and bearish gaps. Today we're going to talk about bearish gaps. But having a strategy to focus on daily is very important. Why? You don't have any distractions. You don't care what they're saying on Bloomberg or Fox News or anywhere at all. Because the fact is, whether or not we're in a good times or bad times with the economy, you have to be focused on technical analysis in the charts, the price action, so it tells you what's going to happen. Because the most important thing is what's going to happen right now. We had a big rally. It was last week here. I'm just going to go back. It was the 30th. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> because somebody came out after we had data and said, do, 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 do. They're not going to raise rates as much. They're going to back off. That was just somebody's opinion. That, that wasn't fact. Okay. The Fed meeting is not even until next week. So again, the market is very emotional. And if you're listening to every single person that's talking, you're changing your mind every second, all day long. Look at what's happening in the price, look at what's happening in the chart, and look at what's happening in the gap. So having a niche also is extremely important. My niche is shorting. It's shorting, actually. So it's been a great year to be with me, to be on the newsletter, to be in the trading room. It's been a good year. I shorted, though, since I started trading in 2012. I've been doing nothing but shorts, but the fact is, again, when I started out in 2008, I went long, I went short, I didn't know what I was doing. It took me about three years, a little bit more than three years to figure out my system, and I made a lot of money once in a short, and I said, this is it. And so from that point onward, I just focused on nothing but shorts, because the fact is that, honestly, you can make a lot of money when there's something, and it falls, why? Because it's panic. So like, let's just say, for example, you're not short the market. Okay, fine. If you're not long either, you're like, okay, fine, whatever. You're not in a panic mode, okay? If you're long the market and the market's falling today, you're in panic mode USA. Oh my God, what should I do? Should I hold, should I sell? I'm up a little, I'm still up. Oh my God, now I'm not up as much. Now I'm down, what should I do? The Fed's in a week, do ba do ba do. Panic is what creates the selling and panic can come in like that. We started selling off yesterday, actually, when somebody said something about the Fed now is going to raise rates. Again, all of this is opinion. But if you look at the chart, if you look at the data, if you look at the price action in the gap, you can see it where it's gonna go ahead of time before it goes there. Uh, the, I don't know what day you're talking about. David's asking about a certain day. What day you're talking about here, David? We rallied on November 30th, and this was actually a neutral open. I did not play this long, but if this is the day you're talking about, we basically were neutral. We closed here, open here, rally. What's your What's your question? Let me know your question, David, because I don't know what day you're talking about. David's asking about an up gap, but I only see one bullish gap here, which was here. I didn't go on this either, but I don't know what your question is. <clears throat> there was only one bullish gap in the last week here. <clears throat> is that the one you're talking about, David? But we didn't go long because I didn't, I didn't think it was a good enough gap. I'm not against going long. I'm not saying that at all, okay? There are some things that are extremely strong, but I don't think the market is one of them right now, okay? But this was a neutral gap, which is rare, but that's what that was. If you want to tell me the day you're talking about, David, there. The day after, we gapped up here, and we didn't go anywhere. So what's your question? This was the first. <clears throat> that's right. We gapped up. I didn't go long there. If you did, you're down already. That's right. It didn't go up. What's your question? You can't go long every bullish gap. And you can't short every bearish gap. If that's what you're saying, I'm not saying that. You cannot short every down gap and you can't go long every up gap. And consequently, you can't short every up gap and you can't go long every down gap, which some people do, which is called a gap fill. That doesn't work consistently either. While sometimes it works, sometimes anything works. You could have bought some of those Reddit stocks and made millions of dollars. 
but 99% of the people out there that bought those Reddit stocks lost. So, I mean, it's not about sometimes something works. It's about the consistency. That's how you get these types of results. You can make, you know, over 600 grand a year trading as a day trader. I do not go long every bullish gap. I didn't say that. I don't short of a bearish gap either. And you can't do the reverse in each one either. You thought I traded each day from a previous gap for the following day. No. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. No, we're looking at today. We're looking at today. We're looking at yesterday. I was talking about yesterday because a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Let's back it up. Let's back it up here. Friday, we closed at one number. I'm just estimating this here. It was like 407 or whatever. The next day on Monday, we opened where? Under 405, it was like 404 or whatever. So the close of a day is 4 Eastern. The open of a day is 930. That's where the gap's being created. I assess that in the morning in the pre-market. So this is nothing here. But then when I get up in the morning, I say, oh, let me check this out here. And that's what I did Monday. And then I said, we're going to fall. And then we did. Boom, boom. Today, we're just continuing. Okay. Um, I don't want to ignore anyone. I, I'm happy to answer any questions and all questions. I just got to watch my timing here. Um, I think all questions are good. I think, actually, I'll just say this off the cuff. I think it's important to learn, and I think a lot of people get so anxious to make money, particularly people that have been trading for years and years and losing. They're so anxious to make money. That's all they care about. They just want to make the money back from every trade they've ever taken that they lost or every class they didn't learn from, and they kind of lose sight in the learning part of it. Um, you know, my last class of the year actually is this coming weekend, but the fact is it's, it's two full days. It's 16 hours with an hour break each day for lunch. That's a time commitment besides the financial commitment. And so many people don't want to spend a whole weekend. Listen, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for it to learn. If you, if you can't even commit a weekend to learning, well, then how are you going to make money doing this? You know, it's, 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 it is important to ask questions. It is important to learn. While it's great to follow somebody that calls trades live in the room, and that's what I do every day, but the, the fact is if you don't, if, like what if I stop doing this? You know, I meet a billionaire and I get married and I'm not doing this five years from now. That very well could happen. So like then, then you don't know what to do without me. It's you got to learn how to do it on your own and you are also risking your own money when you trade and you will have more confidence, you will have more conviction to put on bigger positions, to hold bigger positions if you understand what to do. So I'm all for asking questions. Um, anyways, what is my niche? My niche is shorting. We've been talking about this, why panic? Uh, volume and volatility, I don't really use them. I just generally don't trade things that don't have any volume. So like that's just pretty much it's not like a rule, but it's like, I just, I'm not going to trade something like low float stocks or penny stocks. So let's talk again about what is a gap. This is another one we did. This was actually the week I was off. I called an option in Apple. Stock closed here on the 25th. It was Friday. No, that was Monday. No, it was Friday. Yeah, that was the Friday after the Thanksgiving. Then we gapped down here on Monday, the 28th. Fell, boom, fell off a planet. So 28th and 29th, Apple fell. Okay, so a gap, again, is a difference between the close and the open. I'm not predicting this is going to go here. I'm just waiting. I see it, and I say, oh, and then I rate it using my system, and I say, this is going to fall, and it does, and it takes a day or two. You could have shorted it here as a day trade, could have done the put, could have shorted it here as a day trade, could have done the put. Boom. Okay. Again, what is a gap? Tesla. So we had a nice trade in Tesla yesterday. What did it do? The stock closed here on Friday, opened lower the next day, fell, broke, we shorted it, got in. You could have done it again today, boom. Again, I don't know where this is now, but this is pretty good. So again, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. This is called technical analysis and has nothing to do with fundamentals. If you love fundamentals and you want to get into it, fine. But if the fundamentals do not match up with the technicals, you're going to be in trouble because all that matters is current price action and what's happening today. But I will tell you that we have been very volatile in the sense that the market's been trading in a very tight range the whole month of November. Mm, look at it. Even today, you could say, oh, we're higher or you could say, oh, we're lower. And everybody here today will probably tell you something different. So I'm telling you, I think we're lower. 
But the reality is, again, somebody could just as well say, oh, we're higher. We've been in a tight range, okay? If you want to wait till we break out of the range till you take a trade, fine. That's up to you, okay? But if you don't have 100% conviction in either direction, you know what the answer is? Do nothing. Don't go long, don't go short, wait. So let's talk about what is a gap. Again, this was the key. Was back here in November, market close here, gapped up, rallied. That was one day back in the middle of the month. Then we had this one here. Again, closed here Monday, fell today, dropped. That was a gap down. This was a long time ago. It was September, but it was a really nice gap. So I wanted to bring it up. It was Adobe. It was earnings. Now, we have a couple, a couple earnings in the next few weeks before the Christmas week. Then January, later in the month, earnings season starts for the first quarter of 2023. Earnings season brings a lot of gaps. Why? Stocks and companies like Adobe report their earnings and they tend to have a reaction. Again, I don't know the reaction before it happens. Could be up, could be down. I'm not taking a trade guessing what they're going to say in the earnings. I don't know. I don't have insider information. But I am looking at the stock, waiting to see the reaction. Then I rate it. Then I take a position if it rates good into the open after the gap. Is that clear? So I'm not predicting the gap itself. This could have gone up here. I don't know. And it could have rallied, but it didn't, okay? So this closed down here, 375 and change, open here in the morning, around 320, fell, boom. Fell for planet. Came all the way down here, broke 280. So again, this is panic, selling, volumes down here. Someone's asking about it. I just don't do anything without volume. So how is this gap happening? How are the gaps happening in the market? How are the gap happening in Tesla? What's happening? institutional money and big footprints of institutional money are coming into the stock or the market and they're either buying or selling it one of the reasons i don't have a bullish bias in the market right now at least between now and the end of the year is because institutional money is not coming in and buying this market full throttle it's either waiting sitting on the sidelines already in not selling but waiting or really selling a little bit actually but we're so far off the highs if a lot of people had sold, they already sold basically for this year, for 2022, okay? Now, what is institutional money? It's hedge funds, big traders, big power players in the market. So I'm reading that when I'm reading the gap. But it's the whole idea of trading with power money. You don't want to trade against it. You want to trade with it. So I, I teach people in my class how to read the gap to see if institutional money will come in, grab hold of the gap, and make the gap go in the same direction of the gap or if it's going to reverse which is extremely important so you got to know how to play it but again i do prefer to short okay but i'm focusing on institutional money i'm capturing those moves in a small time frame in a small period daily that's what we're doing in the day trades we're in and out in 5 10 15 minutes and in an option i could be out in a day or two okay like a week is a long time to hold a trade. I really don't generally hold trades for a week. Like Apple, <clears throat> call it, boom, starts to go. Next day drops, you're out, boom, done, okay? Trading, you're not messing around. Why? Anything can happen, okay? But anyways, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, and you can't forget it. A big flow of money is going in a certain direction is what moves the market. Stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. And institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks in all time. And again, if you're not sure of that, then you shouldn't do anything because you could get run over like a truck. Because if you're on the wrong side of things, what happens is a gap can come in overnight because that's when the gap is happening in the first place, okay? And then you're upside down in the trade. Could be an option, could be a swing trade. And that's where people really get hurt. Specifically trades like swing trades where people are on two to one margin or cash. You know, that you can only be on two to one margin at the most in an overnight. Anyways, you saw that here in the Tesla. Beautiful chart, fell the whole month of October, fell the whole month of November, falling now in December, okay? And yet people will come in and buy this dip at some point here. It's crazy, but people will do it. So if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum comes in and occurs, you can take the position in the right direction. And then you get out after the move happens for profit. I call it the money move. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power. It's vital. It makes a difference between you winning or losing. 
And if you really understand what to do, again, if you take the class and you go through the process in your head doing the ratings and you understand what's going on, you won't be scared out of a trade if it's down before it goes. And you can make a lot of money because the market has the ability to pay you. The moves are there. Big moves are there, not just in the QQQs of the SPY, but in any, any of the stocks that we're talking about today. Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, all of them, okay? And sometimes we do some weird ones, you know, but it's the idea of chunking it out where you're following one strategy, one thing each and every day. And for me, again, my focus is also to the short side. Now, this is another Apple one we did. This isn't the Apple I did from last week, but this was an earlier Apple in the month of November. We did the 142 puts, okay? Thursday the 3rd, I sent it out at 7.40 in the morning. This is a newsletter. It's a Gap Options newsletter. You cannot do the trade until the open. The cost was pretty good for Apple, 350 for one. You could have spent $350. Sold today, that's good profit. 129% return investment. I have higher risk here for people and lower risk for them to look at because you can trade options with an account with two grand. You only need $2,000 to open it up. The more you risk, obviously, is up to you. You need a larger account, but this was a nice gap. So where was it on the third? On the third, here. See it? So again, we did the 142s. I usually call them pretty close to the strike. So we closed here, gap down, called that trade early in the morning, fell, boom, fell. So again, that was a couple weeks ago. And then we did it last week too. So it's just in and out in the options. Again, the options are based on my gap method too for momentum. Then on Wednesday the 2nd, a little bit after the open, we did the meta, Facebook 92s. This expired on the 11th. I'm doing the weekly. Its cost was, again, this is pretty good, 280. 30 contracts and $8,400 risk sold at five. 79%. To be honest with you, 50% is a good return in an option within 24 to 48 hours. I'm trying to get to 100. I'm trying, but I may get out of something at 60, 70, 80, okay? Depends what's going on. Depends how much time I have left. Depends on what the market's doing. Let's take a look at it. Wednesday the 2nd, here. So closed here, gap down, fell. Gap down here, boom, done, out, boom. Again, called the 92s, fell, dropped. Okay, it was a couple weeks ago. We also did this, actually. I don't have this one in here, but we did that one too. That was, or that was the earnings one, actually. That was the end of October. Closed here, gap down. Closed up here around 130 and changed. Gap down here around under 100. That was, that was a good one. Anyways, gaps have huge opportunity. Why? Because they spot power and money. Power and money is in charge all the time. Even if you think it's not, it is. And I continue to stress that because, again, so many people are buying the dips and stocks in the market. And I, and I really don't want people to get burned. While I'm here to talk about what I do to market the educational classes that I teach people and I charge for, I charge for my time and information, I genuinely don't want people to get burned doing stupid things. I say this and every single time I do one of these free webinars or lectures, and for some reason, I think people, the concept of going long is for some reason something people gravitate towards. Because you're like, okay, I can understand if you buy low and sell high. I totally get it, Melissa, people say. But for some reason, the idea of shorting, people can't wrap their head around as easily. But the fact is shorting is very advantageous. And if you can gain that niche in it, when you know a lot of people don't like to do it or don't understand it, again, that gives you an edge. It gives you an edge. It's really not that hard. If a stock is at $20 and you have 1,000 shares and you short it, and it drops to $19 in five minutes, how much will you make? $1,000. So it's the number of shares times the buck. That would be an equity trade on margin, for example. It's the idea that you're betting that the stock is going to drop. It's really not that hard of a concept, okay? But again, people love to go long, but you know, learning how to short gives you a big edge, in my opinion. Anyways, like I was saying, gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. 
Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and you get conviction. The large institutional money is on your side and then guess what? You play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power of money, okay? And then it makes it a lot easier for you because you're not supplying the volume. The volume's already there. You're not even making a move. You can't. You can't, okay? You're riding the coattails of the big movers. So what is my process? I get up early, super duper early. I look at the market. I look at what's gapping. <clears throat> and then I rate every gap that I see that I think I might want to train using a 26-point checklist, and this is what I teach in the class. If the gap rates 20 points or more, I'll short it, or I'll do a punt. Otherwise, I won't. So if it rates 15 points and my goal is 20, guess what? I'm not doing it, and I'm also not flipping it. Then I always get this question, well, how many do you do? I try to do one day trade a day, but you know, you could do anything that rates good. Sometimes I'll do a couple options just because it's easier to manage more of those because they go for usually a few days. As far as size, I've been doing this, like I said, since 2008. So I have been trading for almost 15 years. If you are someone that has the money to trade the advanced trader risk that I trained or even more, then you have the cash to do it, go for it after you take the class. There are no prerequisites other than you have to be able to open up an account. So as I stated, the minimum opening for an options account is $2,000. I wouldn't risk $2,000 in a trade. I would do one contract at a time. If you have a hundred grand and you want to risk $8,000 a trade in an option, go for it, okay? So you have to assess, one, how much cash do you have? Two, your knowledge, have you done the class, okay? And three, how long have you been trading? So if you've been trading for a while and you do my class and you have the cash to trade, I certainly don't think there's any problem with people starting out with an advanced trader risk. But you could do 100 shares of something. The minimum would be depending on if you open a retail account or a prop account for margin trading. So at a retail place, you need 25,000 to trade a four to one margin. That would give you 100,000 of buying power. If you have $25,000 opening and you go one penny under, they're going to shut you off though, Steve. So you really need like 30 cash to be at a retail place. If you want to go to a prop place, they'll open you up with sometimes 2,500. You get 10 to one margin, you have 25,000 in VP. But then again, I would not risk more than $250 a trade, $200 a trade per trade risk, all right? So you must look at yourself individually. There's no rules other than the fact that you have to be able to open the account and trade it. If you have questions about that, you can ask me individually and I'll tell you what I think. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, there is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, which is money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction and trends are set and moved by the power money people. Uh, guess what? Uh, which was a lot of in the market. Think about it. I mean, it's just like, this. why do you think everyone wants to trade the U.S. market? Why do you think people want to invest? Why do you think people are talking about it on news channels and business channels all day long, 24 hours a day? People love the idea of getting rich in the stock market. They love it, love it, love it. Okay? And the dream is real. But until you actually get good at a set strategy that consistently works in any market conditions, bullish or bearish, you're not going to be able to achieve your dreams or your goals of making money trading. So that's the thing. Yeah, do your homework. And we are saying. And think intellectually about it. Like when you think about it, everything that I'm saying today really makes sense. It does. The idea of shorting panic makes perfect sense. The idea of only trading with big institutions, whether they're going long or short, that makes sense, okay? Buying the dip doesn't make sense in a market that's trending down all year, you know? Anyways, this is a good example here. I'm just gonna show this here quickly. This was July, as we're talking about the market. 
Actually, let's look at here. This is June. So this is a QQQs. I could have pulled anything up. I could have pulled up the diamonds, the spy, anything. So we based out here in June, rallying, rallying the whole month of July, rallying in the first two weeks of August. Remember that? Okay. Then the Fed came out about the rate hike, and then we fell ever since. Boom. So again, if there was any chance for the market to recover, it was here. It was, it was like, you know, four or five months ago. That was it. But I said like back in April that I didn't think the market made a brand new all-time high this year. I was right. We, we could have though. We had a chance midway point through the year, a little bit after. You know, six and a half, seven months, seven months in a week or so. We could have done it, but we failed, you know? So that was it. And again, what 2023 brings, who knows? It's like, it's a lot easier for me to predict what's going to happen between now and the end of today. If I pulled the market up, I could tell you, or tomorrow or Friday even, rather than look at what's going to happen two months from now, three months from now. Again, look at 2020. If anyone could have predicted what the market would have done in 2020 with COVID, you know, you would be a billionaire. You'd be richer than Elon Musk. So it's like farther out you go, harder to predict. Shorter time frame, easier to predict. What's one of the reasons I trade on a one minute chart for the day trades? And again, I'm doing the weekly options. It's as short as I can do them, you know? Anyways, here's today, the market today. As I said, we're falling. And it's pretty interesting because again, a lot of people didn't expect this after last week's rally. Anyways, my system involves a 26 point Golden Gap rating system. That's the name of my course. It's called the Golden Gap course. And it pinpoints the direction of power of money by reading price action. It's technical analysis, that's what I'm doing. You need to have conviction to make money. Really having a good system gives you the conviction to do it. If you wanna follow the crowd of people, many people are again grasping at straws, you know, trying to find one big trade and make up all the losses for the last five years of trading or whatever the case may be, it's not about that. It's a grind. Here, I'm gonna give you an example. I said earlier that I just moved. It took me 29 months. I started looking in July of 2020 for a new apartment to move after COVID in the city. Prices were down, then they went up in 2021, and now they're starting to drop off again. Anyways, finding an apartment in New York, a great apartment, a fabulous apartment, even if you're willing to spend a lot of money, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. A lot of realtors lie, try to scam you. It's, it's absolutely, was absolutely nuts, actually. I almost gave up, but I didn't. I found a fabulous, fabulous place, but it took me 29 months. Then I moved. Then I moved about two and a half weeks ago, and guess what? I've been on my feet 10, 14 hours a day <laughs> unpacking, and it's so much work, so much work. This is, this is life, you know? After I'm through it, after I'm organized, after my place is decorated beautifully, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna be so happy here, it's an amazing place, I'm meeting amazing people, it's gonna be fabulous. But it was so much work and took so long to find it and I kept pressing on. It reminded me of actually trading. I never thought it would take me more than three years to figure out how to make money in the market. If someone had told me that, I probably wouldn't have done it. Same thing with moving. I said to my mom the other day, if I had known how much work this was, I probably would have moved. But the fact is, I did it, I did it anyway. So. You, you start out doing something, you have it in your mind, your positive mindset, you're gonna make money trading, you're doing it, you're doing it, then you do it and you say, oh my God, this is not as easy as I thought, and then you lost money and then you wanna give up, but you can't give up. You can't give up because if you give up, then everything you did from the day you started trading, the first trade you took, the first class you paid for up until today was a waste. You wasted your time, you wasted your energy and you wasted your money. And that's where I was kind of at with the apartment thing. Now, I will say this. I was living in not a good area of the city. I had a great view, but I was living in Midtown. And Midtown changed because of the homeless people, the crime, COVID, everything. And on top of that, people were smoking pot in my building 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I couldn't take it anymore. It's like six air filters. I have allergies. It was just uh, like if it wouldn't have been for the pot, I don't think I would have kept even pushing myself to find a place. But the fact is, anything that you want in life that's a dream or a big goal, it could be moving to a new home like I did. It could be moving to a different location, a different city, a different town, a different state. It could be a different job, a different career. It could be having a baby. It could be anything. It could be losing weight. It could be training. Any big goal that you have is going to come with challenges. But, but the, I'm telling you, 
the mindset that so many people have that it's going to happen in an instant and that it's not going to take work and it's not going to take money is wrong, okay? So as soon as you accept that it will be work, it could take you more time than you think. It might cost $7,000, which is the cost of my class. It might take you several years. Who knows? But the fact is, if you quit, you definitely will not make it. So you got two choices. You either quit or you do nothing and you just keep basically going along, not getting anywhere, or you just throw yourself into it, which is pretty much what I'm doing now with unpacking, and you just say, I'm not stopping till I'm done. And that is what you have to do. And that type of mentality is what separates the winners from the winner, winners from the losers. It's what separates the winners from the losers, the perseverance that people have, that they want to be successful. You've heard it in many stories, except for people forget. They forget that Elon Musk was not born a billionaire. They forget that, you know, many, many people, I could name Mark Cuban's another one. People started out and they weren't successful. They weren't burnt, born at the place they are now. People think, oh God, all these people are so successful. All these business people, listen, they all had their hardships and they all had their hard times. And you, you got to go through it. You know what I mean? You need a growth mindset always. Um, Non-safe pot area, I'm, I'm now I moved uptown. I moved uptown. It's again, you, I smell it outside, but the building I'm in now is so much better, so much better quality building. I'm not gonna have that problem here. It's the condo. They have rules like, again, they had rules there, but they weren't enforcing them with the pot. It was crazy, it was coming through the vents. But anyways, here they have rules and no one is gonna be smoking pot in this building. It's just not gonna happen. But if someone would, I can complain and they will be right on top of it. So again, it's like, you know, you look back at your life and you say, gosh, I thought this was gonna be so easy and, and it should have been easier than this. I, I, you know, what can you do? You can whine, you can complain, you can wish things were different, but they're, but they're not. So you kind of just have to accept it. It's the same thing with the cost of food now, gas. You could say, oh my God, I, I can't believe, like they're telling me inflation is only 7%. That's so ridiculous because if you go to if you go to the food store, I have a Whole Foods across the street. Things are up a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like so, the numbers they even tell you are so silly. Like I mean, again, what are you gonna do? Not buy food? No, you have to buy food. You have to fill your car. You have to drive. You know, you have to live your life. So there's only one choice. You're gonna have to make more money. That's it. Like I was saying this to a friend the other day. I'm like, well. You know, I'm paying a lot more now for where I'm living. I'm living now. Guess what? I guess I'm just going to have to make more money. So that's okay. That's okay. It's okay to have big goals. I think it's problematic for people when they don't have goals and they don't have dreams. And guess what? Then life becomes really dull. It becomes really boring. And you basically just become lazy. And I don't care how old you are. I hear these stories from people. Oh, my God, I'm 65. I'm 70. I'm I'm still working and I'm still trying to figure out how to trade. Okay, 70 is young. Christy, Kirstie Alley just died yesterday. It was so sad, so sad. I saw that on Fox News last night. She was only 71. Now she died of cancer. 71 is young. That's young, okay? I'm looking for a risk to reward of one to one in my day trades and one to one in my options. But I'm telling you, I'm happy with 50% if I can get it there. So if I'm risking $2,000 in, in a day trade, if I make 1,000, I'm okay with that. But I'm trying to make two, okay? You have to watch what the market's doing and you have to watch the targets as well. All right, I went off on a tangent there, so we'll see, I'm watching my time. But anyways, that was a good discussion. You know, if you walk away with nothing else today, think about what I said about not giving up. There's nothing wrong with hard work. You know, I think the problem with society nowadays, everyone, everybody wants everything now, today, yesterday, and people don't want to work for it anymore. That's not reality. And I don't care if people working from home. You still got to get up every day. And you still got to go to work. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I admire people that work hard. In fact, some some man I met, some one of the worker dudes that was coming in my apartment asked me what I did. He asked me if I was married. I said, no, I'm still single. He said, why are you still single? I said, I haven't met anyone who fell in love yet. And he said, well, what kind of man are you looking for? I said, someone that's successful. He said, well, do they have to make a lot of money? I said, I'd love for them to make a lot of money, but if they're, if they're not making a lot of money, I at least want them to want to make a lot of money. So I want to, I would be attracted to a man who has uh, big ideas of success and someone that is entrepreneurial, you know, someone that's motivated. 
you know, the problem is, you know, so many people you meet, they're just not motivated. I, I want to be with someone that aspires at least to be successful, not someone that's lazy, you know. Again, think of all the people that you know now that, again, own all these companies. They didn't start out wealthy and rich. <laughs> Rod just says that's me. Anyways, 26-point checklist, that's what I teach. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock. To make the correct decision, having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. A checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists. Okay, so this was, this was one week, and I'm going to go fast here through this. I'm going to go pretty fast here through this. This was one week of day trades, 15,486. This was day trades. We did Apple here on the 7th. Doesn't look like much, but we were in and out. We shorted it at 136.80, got out here again. This is a little bit more than a buck. So again, my risk was 30.60. I made a little bit more than 50%, 2016. Then we didn't do anything on the 4th. Then the 3rd, we had a good trade here. Risk 31.50, got out with 25.50. We did the QQQs, it was 11.3. Down in here, closed here, fell, gap down, dropped. We were in and out then, that was the third. And then we did a day trade of the SPY. And this was the second, this was here. Closed here, gap down. We actually shorted this here, got in, get out. It was the day of the Fed, then it rallied, then it fell. But we were in and out of this super duper quick, okay? And we did Uber, which actually funnily was a long, we went long Uber here, closed here, gapped out. We went long, it spiked up, we got in, got out, and then it closed here, and then this fell. That fell with the overall market that was 11.1, .1. and then we had a big play, big play in Meta. Again, this used to be Facebook, it is Facebook. 97.40, we added at 97.20, we went hog wild in this, which is a great trade. So I did an ad in this because I loved it. 6,720, it was 10.31. This was this day in here. Big fat red bar was a short. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, okay? And as I spent a lot of time getting ready in the morning, get up early, do the gaps, rate everything, look at the market, and I'm in and out of trades fast. So the more time you spend on prep, learning, trading, studying, again, what you're gonna do, the faster you should be in and out of the trade. So if you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way it's gonna happen for you is if you have number one, a high winning strategy, number two, good money management, and number three, a good mentor to follow. While I think it's important to have a mentor when you're learning, it's not something that you should need for the rest of your life. You come, you take my class, you learn from me, you want to join the trading room for a bit, you, don't, you don't, shouldn't have to rely on me forever. I mean, that's the whole point of learning. But for me, I focus in the morning. Time of the day is key. And again, you can trade from home. You can be anywhere in the world and do this. It is about chunking it out. And I think it's very important to empower yourself to trade, not just this year in 2022, but next year in 2023 and going forward. While a lot of people think the economy has you know, only upside to go, things could get worse before they get better. Again, interest rates could continue to climb. That is not good for people who have credit cards and who have, want to buy cars and houses and everything else. You can't stop spending money. You can't stop using credit cards or buying cards or buying gas or food or homes. You have to live your life. Okay, so again, the only choice is what? Earn more money. Figure out how to do it. You get a raise at your job, you find another career, or you learn how to trade on the side. Even if you can only trade two or three days a week, that's extra money if you look at it over the course of the month and a year, even if you can't do it every day. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and enter the stock on the day. The course teaches a price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So my class, the last class of the year is this weekend, the 10th and 11th. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class tuition is $69.99. Again, 9 a.m. to 5. And then I also run a live trading room. The trading room is open Monday at 9 a.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're usually done trading by 10 a.m., 10, 15, 10, 30 in the morning. The newsletter for options is a separate special service. You can go to my website and look at that. But for this end of the year last class, deadline's Friday. If you want to sign up, you can get a year free in the trading room with the class this weekend, again, for $69.99. Any questions from anyone about anything here? I'm just, just going to answer any questions for the last 10 minutes. Good discussion today. 
uh, you know, again, don't get down on yourself if you haven't made it yet as a trader. And there's nothing wrong with hard work, okay? Well, if, again, if you just fast forward and all the hard work is done, you'll be so happy that you did it, so happy that you made it. You know, if someone could say, okay, you know, five years from now, you're earning a million dollars a year. Would you do everything that you had to do? Do all the work you had to do? Do all the study? Take my class. Would you do everything you had to do to get there? Would you? You'd say, oh, no, five years is too long. It's way too long. No, it goes by like the blink of an eye. Look at it. Next year, 2023, it's less than 30 days away. Actually, it's less than 20 days from Christmas. Christmas is in 19, 19 days. So, I mean, you know, life goes so fast, so fast. It's worth the investment to invest in your future, even if it's work, even if it costs money. It's the, it's the only way to make it. No one's going to hand you anything in a silver platter. Okay. Any last minute questions here from anyone? Thank you so much for having me. So nice to be here, and I will see all of you in 2023. Again, if you want to contact me, if you have questions or would like information about the class, here's my email. Or if you want to go to my YouTube, you can watch it. It's on the stock swoosh. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, Melissa, thank you very much.